I'm gonna try a bit of a different tactic with her right now. I actually just wanna get her out of her head. And um, this is gonna seem like I'm breaking the rules a little bit, but this is actually part of being a dog trainer. So I'm just gonna get walking a little bit right now. I'm gonna stop sort of nattering at her and I'm just gonna use a little bit of leash pressure. I'm gonna change directions a little bit and I'm just gonna see if I can get her to relax by just getting her to move a little bit. I think she just needs to get out of her head. Sometimes what happens is when we're working with a dog that's a little bit unsure, if I am too picky about my expectation and she doesn't really have any opportunity to be successful, sometimes you can actually cause dogs to be a little bit more stressed. So you're gonna see, you're gonna, in a moment, you're going to see I'm going to actually let her walk a little further ahead. I might actually let her walk out um, and pull on the leash a little bit more than maybe I should. But I'm making this decision just to kind of let her relax a little bit. When I see I have a little bit more dog back, I'm going to add my, my expectations back in. Now, keep in mind, this is very different than what I would do if I had a dog that was like pinging off the leash and trying to jump on everybody who's going by because they were really um, rambunctious and overconfident. She's a little bit overwhelmed, so I'm just going to... Um, you know, soften my approach a little bit with her and see what happens. Okay, my love. Okay, let's go. Had a good girl. Yay. Now, I don't want to let her pull and drag me, but good girl. But what she's doing right now is totally fine. Good. Excellent. Good girl. Nice. Oops. That's it. So if she gets too far ahead, I'm just going to give her a little bit of an adjustment. That's too much. That's it. Good girl. Good. And there's some people going across the street over there. She just gave them a little bit of a look. Good girl. Just to make sure that I'm still in control, I'm going to do a little loop-de-loo here. Stevie. Yay. There we go. Good. That's it. So sometimes doing a little turnaround is a great way to reset. I'm going to do another one here. Stevie. Yes. Good. Let's go. Yay. Good for you, Steve. Hey. Sit. Oh, that was good. Anytime you get to a stop walk or a crosswalk here, stop sign, I would always encourage you to stop and work a sit with your dog because the last thing we want is me to get to the edge of the street, cars are going by, people are passing by, and I have a dog that walks right out into the street. In fact, one of the things that we teach our dogs is that when we stop walking to automatically sit at our side, even without asking once we get into our higher levels. For now though, I'm just gonna use a little bit of a placement or ask her to sit. Good girl, there's a dog walking by over there. She didn't seem to care too much about that. This bush seems like it's pretty cool. Just leave that. Yes, good girl. Excellent, good. Very nice. Yes, good girl, good. Okay, which way? Straight, let's give it a go. So one thing to keep in mind when you're trying to work on your sidewalk walking or neighborhood walking is that it's not really about completing your walk or getting all the way around the block or whatever your, your distance goal is. It's about what's happening on that walk. So I could very well spend 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes out here and I might make it you know, a block with her. Um, because also keep in mind, the further you get away, if things starts to go south and you're too far away from home and you don't have your treats on you or you don't have your things on you, it could be a little bit messy. So I want to make sure that I'm really prepared. Now, something that I didn't mention before my walk, again, I'm just dog training and talking at the same time here. There's a car coming by and a person crossing the street. She's making a good choice to check it out, but she's just sitting, which is awesome. Good girl. You can see her little nose going, investigating again. Good girl. Yes, that's excellent. Here you go. Yes, good girl. One thing I failed to mention before we uh, started walking is, again, um, Stevie is not my dog. Now, I um, have a bunch of training equipment with me. I have her regular collar. I have my, my six-foot leather leash. I have good control. But I also have a gentle leader in my pocket. I also have a, a, two bags of extra treat. I have a tug toy. I have a bunch of different things because I wasn't quite sure what I would need. And that's a good idea to, to have with you as well. Have lots of different options um, with you. Now, you'll notice I'm not really stopping to let her sniff. Um, there's a lot of people out there that talk about sniff walks. And sniff walks are more something, that's actually not something that I do with my dogs, to be perfectly honest. If I am street walking like this, sidewalk walking, um, I'm walking. We're like out for a bit of exercise. I would typically have her go to the bathroom first or maybe towards the end of the walk um, or potty as our 
American friends like to say. Um, and then um, <laughs> Misty Moo, thank you. Um, and then I would be out just walking. You know, if I wanted to let her have a bit more downtime, that might be where I would throw my long line on and, you know, go to the park or um, baseball diamond or something like that and give her a little bit more freedom. Okay, another little stop walk. Oh, look at that. I gave her a tiny bit of leash pressure and she sat actually all by herself that time. Oopsie, oopsie. So there's little rules that you can imply here. Once she's sitting, I don't want her just to get up and do her own thing. She got up on her own, so I just placed her back. Good girl, okay, we got some clipping or something happened over there. Good girl, yes, okay. Let's actually move off to the side. We have a little visitor going by, come here, sit. Wow, there we go, yes. Good girl. Okay, I'm gonna try petting her a little bit first. Yes. Good girl. It's always such an interesting trick when you pet them. See how, how it relaxes them a little bit. Okay, let's go. Okay, good girl. Watch her. Good girl. Very nice. Good. So there's a lot more noises, a lot more things that you're gonna find when you're out walking like this than if you're you know, in your backyard or um, going around the dining room, whatever it might be. Just gonna fix her position here. There we go, good girl. So again, I don't really expect that she heals beside me and stares at my face when we're just going for like a walk around the neighborhood, but I do expect that she's mindful and that she's a bit aware. So as she gets a little bit too far out ahead of me, I'm just gonna reset her a little bit. There we go, good girl. I can reset her by physically turning all the way around like this, which usually makes, that's better, a bit more of an impact, or I can just pull back on the leash and readjust her position. Good, so I don't want her cutting me off. Good girl, good. If I find I'm doing it a lot, like right now, it's because she's on a little bit more of a high alert. We're just entering a parking lot here, so I'm just gonna bring her off to the side here. You can see she's getting a little bit overwhelmed. Sit. And I'm just gonna stop, oops, and work a sit. So that controlled sit is just a way to kind of get the brain down again, get a little bit more control. Good girl, just leave that, just sit. That's all you have to do is sit. Good. Doing something stationary is actually a lot easier for dogs than actually moving. So sometimes just finding a quiet spot just off to the side, just having the dog sit for a second. There we go. Good girl. There. So I would actually say the walk is going fairly well, but um, I am noticing that she is feeling a lot of overwhelm. And what I actually think that this particular dog would really benefit from is finding a spot somewhere where it's fairly busy, um, but somewhere where I can be safe and just sort of sit and have her watch the world go by and get to the point where we actually can get her taking food again and get her a little bit more relaxed. So I'm just gonna keep going until I can find a spot that sort of matches that description. And then we're just gonna hang out for a little bit. And I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, why I'm gonna reward some things, how I'm gonna reward some things. Sometimes people get hung up on the word reward being is that it has to be with treats, but there's lots of other ways that re we can reinforce our dogs that doesn't necessarily have to be of food like she's in the spot right now where she doesn't really want the food because she doesn't really feel safe and comfortable I'm not gonna force the food down her throat um, so there's gonna be other ways that I can let her know that she's doing a great job and that she's okay all right my love let's go so sometimes walks can consist of finding spots and just sort of hanging out with your dog especially if they're a dog that needs to um, get a bit more worldly experience you know people talk a lot about socialization and um, Sometimes people think that that sort of starts and ends with like going to dog parks and dogs playing with other dogs. But right now I'm socializing her. She is seeing all kinds of people and bikes and cars and noises and there's construction going on. Um, we also call this exposure. So we have dogs that are learning to just be around all of these things and learn how to um, just be. Now, I don't know if she's at the point where she's going to take food quite yet. And again, that's a good sign to sort of Oh, oh, maybe not. Oh, get it. Get it, get it, get it. Here. Okay. That's a good sign. Good girl. So again, sometimes when they aren't taking food, it usually means that they're a little bit stressed. Yes, good girl. So I think she's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable. 
this is a good opportunity to just have them chill out while people walk by without actually having to see every single person that they uh, that walks by. Sometimes just learning to chill out as people walk by is a great lesson as well. And then maybe the occasional person can stop by and um, you know practice saying hello or just stand near them while you work on the dog training part. But we want to be careful we just don't let all of our expectations fly out the window because we happen to be in a different situation. Can you actually walk between? If you don't mind, that would be amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Good girl. Here you go. Yes. Uh, something that I want to try with Stevie is actually try doing a bit of walking with her gentle leader on. Uh, this is a tool that her um, her family uses with her to help with pulling. Um, being a gentle leader lover myself and having a dog that is um, of my own, we have a border collie that can sometimes be really overwhelmed by loud sounds and things like that. The gentle leader is something that I use with her and it really helped build her confidence. She felt just more comfortable on it. It also allowed me to do far less leash adjustments, which for you know a dog that's a bit more softer minded like my own dog and like Stevie, I think it might be helpful. So um, I'm just gonna put it back on and do a little bit more of the walk with the gentle leader on and just sort of see if there's um, any difference. Now she is used to the gentle leader. So um, obviously if you've never used one before, you're not just gonna slap it on your dog's face and then go walking in a city she's been trained with it she understands you know that it's a good thing and not a bad thing and um you know she's comfortable with it already okay love so my goal right now is you know we've been out here working for a bit yes good girl i would actually really love to just end on a win i would like to find maybe somewhere that's a bit more or less chaotic than this downtown that seems to be fire trucks and ambulances everywhere currently um and just see if i can um you know, just get a little bit of, uh, a little bit more walking in with less distractions. Hey, miss. Um, and then just see if we can end on more, more success. So we just got back to the training facility and I was thinking a little bit about the training session that we just had with Stevie. And for those of you who watch a lot of our videos, you'll notice that there's usually a clear struggle and then we end with a big win with the dog. And today's video didn't really possess that in a very obvious way. You might actually look at the video and think like, gosh, the dog didn't really, you know, walk confidently by the end of the video. But that in itself is actually what I consider to be a win. Part of dog training is learning about the actual dog and what your plan needs to be for them and part of being a good leader is making good choices for your dog in their dog's training and sometimes after you know, 15 minutes of walking your dog in a downtown busy place it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to conquer every distraction and they're going to walk perfectly on a loose leash in fact that's probably not going to happen. But what you are going to learn about is what reinforcements you're going to need to use, what type of environment you need to be in, how to push your dog's distractions, um, how long to work. All of those types of things are going to give you good information so that you can go towards your next training session and make a lot better choices, which is going to give your dog a lot more confidence in you. So remember, wins don't always have to be very big, very obvious. Sometimes it's about learning the situation and learning to do a better training job with your dog. I would say one of our biggest challenges from today's walk was uh, basically her lack of focus. Sometimes we had a bit of it, sometimes we didn't have any of it. And if you find that you're in the same boat with your dog, you're gonna wanna check out this video right there, all about how to get more focus with your dog. On that note, I'm Kale, happy training.